In an earlier episode, I talked about putty and the different types I use and why I use them. For this particular exercise, I'm going to be using this Evercoat glazing putty. I don't want to use that uh, Bondo spot putty because these are a little deep. And if you'll remember from that video, if I fill that with a deep putty that air dries, it'll contract as it dries. I don't have to do it again. Big mess. So I'm going with this stuff. And what I'm going to use to apply the putty is this. It's an X-Acto knife with one of these flat blades. It's a pretty dull blade, but I like this because it's a very precise spatula. If you're curious, this is a piece of silicone rubber that was left over from a mold I made a long time ago. This is what was left in the mixing bucket, like this. When I was done, I pulled it out, and because not a lot of things adhere to silicone very well, this makes for a great little mixing platform for putty and other stuff. I really don't want to slather a ton on it. I want to be as efficient as possible with the putty because that means less work cleaning up. There we go, that looks pretty good. And on this last one, I'm not only going to fill that hole, but I've also got a couple little bumps, little dents in the middle of it. Okay, now I'm going to fill in that giant hole. It's all dry now, just gonna go in and sand it smooth. Okay, looks pretty good, but you can still see there's a couple little holes here and there, and I need to clean up this edge, so I'm gonna need to do another pass with the putty, but overall, I think I fixed up you know, 90% of the problems here. Part of the way I build up my kits is I like to pin all the parts together. I'm not happy to just glue these two things together. Because that little point right there is a pretty high stress point and it can really easily snap. So what I want to do is have a couple of metal pins or screws going from the handle into the body. What I need to do is drill holes for those. I want to make sure everything lines up properly. So I've printed out a template for the gun. I'm going to line up the pieces on the paper and then draw some lines for where I want those holes to go. What I want to do now is drill these holes. They need to be in this location and roughly to this depth and they need to go straight in through here. And remember, these are gonna serve two purposes. One is gonna to be to pin this to the main body, and also I'm gonna use it to hold a screw so that I can paint it. What I'm gonna do is clamp it into this so that I can hold it steady while I'm drilling. First thing I'm gonna do is drill a pilot hole using this little guy. The idea behind that is it just creates a guide point for the bigger guy. It tends to be a little bit of wobble when you're drilling, so in theory, the pilot hole will kind of set the place where the big guy goes. Looks good. See those numbers in there? Those are used to tell how far you've drilled. Looking at this piece, I only want to drill down, I would say right about there. Any deeper and I'm going to come poking out the other side. Go back and look at this. So that's like right at the one and one eighth mark, or one sixteenth. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark that on the drill press, then when I go to drill, I know to only go that deep. Yep, that turned out really good. And also, just to show you what I was talking about earlier, here's the quarter inch rod that I'm gonna be using. It's right in, very nice. 
and there's a little bit of play in there which is great because I need to fill that with glue. 